Welcome 301. I am Andrea. We are Nothing But Fantasy and you are listening to Lenny Melnick Fantasy Sports Baseball Something Network. <laughs> uh, today we're going to talk about September call-ups, potential September call-ups. And uh, thank you to those who joined me in the chat room and let's just get started. This is the final season that teams get to have 40 players on their active roster in September. So, like, beginning next season, they're going to scale back the active roster limit to 28 players in September. So, that's 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 crazy. And then the limits in every other month will increase to from 25 to 26, including in the postseason. So, this is the last year that we get to do this, and it's going to be very interesting. We don't really have much to go by because this was the first year for the trade deadline to be just one day, and we're going to call up a bunch of prospects or whatever, and then next year it's going to be completely different. So, we'll see how this happens this year, especially since we just started the trade deadline thing. It'll be interesting to see if there's any kind of significant changes um, because of that or not, but... I broke it down in between the American League and the National League, so we're, we'll just go ahead and get started with the American League. And, of course, we have to start off with Kyle Tucker. I I mean, I'll quit talking about this guy on September 2nd when he gets called up. They say he's going to be, get called up um, and join the team in Milwaukee on September 2nd. Finally, we get a date for this. And we're, this isn't even positive. This was just what the manager said on a radio show that I found on Twitter. So they did say September 2nd. This guy is out of control. And, I mean, Josh Reddick, I already talked about Josh Reddick and Marisnik, and between both of them, they have one home run since the All-Star break, and that has not changed. But on the other side, we got Kyle Tucker down at AAA with 92 runs, 97 RBIs, 30 stolen bases, and 34 home runs. I mean, I just don't see how the Houston Astros could possibly keep him down another day. And he should make the postseason, too, because the, I guess if the player is on the 40-man roster or the injured list by August 31st, then they're eligible to play in the postseason. Correct me if I'm wrong there, but I think that's true. Uh, so Houston Astros, obviously, the, between them and the Yankees, nobody can decide which team is better. And I say the Houston Astros are pretty darn good there was some kind of fact that I saw um that said that the Astros could be the first team to uh strike out the least as hitters and strike out the most as pitchers so their pitchers will strike out more than any other team and their hitters will strike out less than any other team at in the same year so compete with that Yankees Yankees Spankies Aaron Judge is hitting now, finally, so they got that going for them. But anyway, uh, Willie Castro, Detroit shortstop. A lot of these are coming from teams. The teams that are most likely to use youngsters in September are the teams that are not going to make the playoffs, and Detroit is one of them. Willie Castro was already called up. He's a shortstop in Detroit, but he looks like he's going to be playing everyday shortstop from here on out. Um, I know there's, like, a ton of shortstops to choose from, and it's rather deep in the shortstop department. But... At Triple A this season, he hit in 465 at bats. He batted 301 with 11 home runs and 17 stolen bases. He's been up in the majors for 18 at bats, and he hasn't hit any home runs or stole any bases. He's only hitting 222. So this might not be the smoothest transition. He's only 22 years old, but he is up, and he is going to play for the rest of the season. It looks like so. I don't know if you want to put. I don't know if you, I definitely know you don't want to put him on your roster if you're trying to get ahead in the standings this season. Uh, I don't know. I mean, whatever it is, you, I wouldn't rely on this guy batting 222 at the major league level. And there's so many shortstops to choose from that I wouldn't even look twice at this cat. Ryan Mountcastle, though, I will look twice at first baseman in Baltimore. In 505 at bats in the minors at Triple A. He's batting 309 with two stolen bases and 25 home runs. And he also has 81 RBIs and 81 runs. Um, he's played first base, third base, and left field in the minors this season. He's ha made 83 
starts at first, nine at third, and 22 in the outfield. His only competition in left field is Anthony Santander or Jace Peterson, and his only competition at third base is Rio Ruiz. It's really just almost hard to imagine a situation where he wouldn't come up and get playing time. Um, He's not even ranked as their number one, number two, number three, number four, or number five prospect. He's ranked as the number six prospect, but he is crushing it down in the minors, Triple A. This is his first season down to appear at Triple A. Last year he played all season at Double A. He had 394 at bats, but this year at Triple A, 505 at bats. He is ready to come to the majors. He plays all over the place, so there cannot be any kind of excuses for this guy to not have a spot to play. And I would consider putting him in my active roster this year in fantasy. Uh, moving on to Tampa Bay, Nate Lowe. This guy's been going back and forth between the majors and AAA. He's hit well at the major league level, like to the tune of something in 290-something. But his problem is that he's a lefty first baseman. They already have one of those in G-Man Choi. Where is he going to play? I don't know where he's going to play. He actually did, at in the minors this season, he's made five appearances at third base. Now, if you look at the third base depth chart at in Tampa, you can see that Joey Wendell is at the top of it with Matt Duffy, Eric Sogard, and Yandy Diaz, uh, which I think is coming back, so that would be something to watch out. But he just doesn't have a lot of um, opportunity unless they put him at third base, which I don't know if he's any good there or not, but I would assume that if he was, they'd probably play him there more often, and he's played 72 times at first and five at third. He also played DH, so... It's just unfortunate for this guy because he doesn't have a spot with G-Man Choi there. And, you know, they recently acquired Aguilar. So he would add some depth at first base. He's shown improvements at the plate with his 290 batting average, 125 hits, and 76 RBIs down at Durham. He's just a raw power guy. And he's... I think that he will... I do think that they will call him up for depth at least in matchup situations because he's a lefty and, you know, that's that. But somebody to look out for. Unfortunately for him, there's not a lot of guaranteed playing time here. Jesus Lazardo, Oakland starting pitcher, who we put in the draft guide and we're expecting this guy to get called up early this season. Um, he totally skipped over low A. He went straight to high A and he was promoted after three starts to double A and that's where he just showed his absolute domination. Um, he had a 2.29 ERA with 86 strikeouts and 78 innings pitched down in 16 starts. He's got three good pitches, good command, good control. Um, actually, last year was his first full season back because he had Tommy John surgery before that. He had 109 innings in his first full season last season, and he was supposed to reach at least, I, I would say somewhere around 150 this season. We were expecting him to get called up rather early. He's been hurt the entire season. They, uh, Oakland doesn't have a problem calling up youngsters with no experience. Last one I remember is Sean Manea. He was called up after three starts at AAA and pretty much stayed up ever since. So I do, and he, this guy, Luzardo, he's making his rehab starts at AAA right now. He's got his pitch count up to 84, and the coaches want him to get his pitch counts up to a hundred before they make the call, but this guy is absolutely a hundred percent worth rostering in fantasy if he does get called up and he does get the opportunity to make some starts. They might put him in the bullpen. Who knows what they'll do? This it's very iffy at this stage of the game what they're going to do. And and by the way, that brings up you know these these pitchers that people are saying. Okay, we have pitchers like Luis Severino. Um, uh, who's the guy? Glass now. Even Tay, um, what's his name in Pittsburgh that I loved last year that didn't play at all this season? Anyway, these guys are down making rehab starts, and everybody's like, oh, yeah, he's going to make rehab starts, blah, blah, blah. Well, if they start their rehab, if they already started their rehab and they only have one, you know, one game under their belt in rehab, when do you think they're going to get called up and how much are they going to help your fantasy team? Because a lot of these, like, especially pitchers like Glass now who've been out for a significant amount of time, are they going to put this guy back into the rotation? I don't know if they are or not. The chances are 50-50 that he heads to the bullpen. 
because you know they have to get stretched out and they have to have their rehab they have to do this they they don't want to they don't want to mess around with players health especially if they're not going to make the playoffs now Tampa Bay is an interesting situation because Tampa Bay we don't know if they're going to make the playoffs as of right now there's a chance that they could make the playoffs same with Oakland so it's something to look out for when we're talking about September call-ups. We're talking about pitchers that are coming back from injury. I wonder, depending on their situation, I think that it has a lot to do with the team's situation, how they're going to use these players coming back from injury, the prospects that could be called up, um, et cetera, et cetera. But there is a White Sox on this list, a White Sox that nobody's really talking about, not that I've heard anyways, but I'm sure that guy does know. Bobby Dalback. I have, I don't know. Oh my gosh, Phil Chappie traded Luzardo for Jordan Alvarez. You're kidding me, right? You're kidding me. Hey, dude, Dan, Phil, thanks for coming. So Danny Mendick, he's 25 years old, right? He's not a youngster anymore, but he's still not old. He's a White Sox infielder, super utility guy. Strikes out 16% of the time, walks 12% of the time. And like I said, he's 25, but he's got 17 homers and 19 stolen bases and 462 at-bats down at AAA. He's shown improvement from last year in 2018 when he hit 14 homers and stole 20 bases at double A. I mean, here's the thing. This guy plays everywhere. He plays everywhere. Um, he's hitting the Rule 5 draft pool for the second straight year, and I don't think they're going to let him get stolen from them because he's absolutely useful. Um, he's played 48 games at second, 35 games at third, 40 games at shortstop, and 9 outfield. He plays left field. So if you look at the depth charts here in Chicago, you got Yolmer Sanchez, Ryan Goins. These two guys, they're just not great, right? They're just not they're not excellent. They're not anything special. This this guy I'm telling you about, Mendek, he hits home runs, he steals bases, he's on fire right now. I really do think that he's gonna get called up and be useful, at least to the White Sox. He plays everywhere. That's great position eligibility for fantasy. He's batting 281 with in 462 at bats down at Triple A. Put him on your radar. Etch it. Jared Walsh in LA plays first base. Got 29 homers across. No, last year he had 29 home runs across three different minor league levels. Right now he has 34 home runs with 84 RBIs and 88 runs, a 324 batting average. He was actually called up earlier this season. And he had made 38 at bats. He hit 237. Now, I mean, we can't really say whether or not he's going to hit 237 going forward. We can't really say if Tucker, Kyle Tucker, is going to hit one something going forward at the major league level. But he just broke this guy, Jared Walsh, just broke Big Poppy's record down at AAA Salt Lake for the most home runs by a lefty in a season. He's got, like I said, 34 homers right now. He played three times in right field and 56 at first base. Um, First base would be the most likely place you'll see him. Albert Pujols and Matt Theis are there, but I don't know. This guy, 34 bombs, it could be useful. I don't think the Angels are going anywhere. Here's another one that I think is an excellent find, okay? I found this guy. I definitely didn't find him at Rotowire. He's This is the first time I've ever not seen a useful player in the Rotowire directory. Like, this guy is not to be found. He actually is to be found, but he's... Doesn't have any stats since 2016. He's a he's a pitcher slash hitter, but now he's a hitter. Right now he's a hitter. He's not on the 40 man roster. His name is Jose Rojas in Los Angeles. He's 25 years old. Okay, let's talk about him. He is a former 36th round pick in LA. He's a native of LA. He's hit well at just about every level. He's on the brink of hitting the majors. He's got an unorthodox swing. He strikes out a ton. So why in the world would I like this guy, right? 31 home runs, 99 runs, 107 RBIs, and four stolen bases in 561 plate appearances at AAA this season. Yeah. He plays all kinds of plays. Okay, he plays 16 games at first base. He played 39 games at second base, 29 games at third base, and 12 in left field. Seriously. He's also a Rule 5 eligible player this offseason, so why wouldn't the Angels call this guy up, right? He strikes out 22. It says he strikes out a lot, but he, according to fan graphs, he strikes out 22% of the time, 22.8% of the time. 
so I'll say 23. Still, you're hitting 31 home runs, dude. 122 games he's been in. But I'm almost positive that this guy used to be a pitcher. He is nowhere to be found in Roto-Wire, so this is a secret beyond all of secrets. Um, he can play, like I said, first, second, third, and left field. You got David Fletcher playing um, third base. He's hitting 272, but he doesn't hit home runs. He doesn't steal many bases. Um, you have Luis Rengifo at second base, another youngster, but he's batting 212. Three home runs and a stolen base in 158 plate appearances. So it's not just limited to first base here with this guy. And that's that. I hope, I do think that the Angels are at least going to put him on the 40 man roster. And I think they're going to try to not allow him to be taken in the Rule 5 draft. Another guy in the American League is Ronald Guzman for Texas. He's hitting over 350 with an OPS above one this month down at Nashville. He's a great defender, probably more of a defender than an off offense guy. So uh, the only reason I bring him up is because he's going to get a lot of opportunity in September. Logan Forsyth, he's 32. He's the starting first baseman right now in Texas. He's not worth a crap. He's not hitting worth a crap. He's got a 145 average in the last 21 days. He's not great defensively. And I think that Texas is going to replace him the earliest chance that they get so the big reason why I bring up Guzman is for opportunity more than offensive talent so let's just recap what we talked about in the American League real quick before we go to the National League these are the these are the players that I would recommend putting on your fantasy baseball radar for the last couple weeks of the season Kyle Tucker definitely I just picked him up in a couple leagues I'm trying to pick him up wherever I can early um, Mountcastle definitely an option in Baltimore um, I'm not going to say Nate Lowe because I don't think he has a great opportunity to get playing time, but I will say Jesus Lazardo in Oakland, Danny Mendek in Chicago, Jared Walsh in L.A., and Jose Rojas, L.A. too. Those are the ones I would put on my radar and I would probably try to pick up this weekend. National League, Kevin Cron, Arizona. This guy is related to CJ, and so we know that he's probably got power. That's probably really... I don't know. I shouldn't assume things that just because you come from the same family means that you can hit 38 home runs or 35, but he ha he has hit 38 home runs. Literally this year in AAA, he's hit 38 home runs, and he's had 299 at-bats. Think of this. Just think of this. Multiply the 299 at-bats by two, and multiply the 38 home runs by two. If you average this out over an full season of at-bats I would this guy would he's on pace to hit, hit over 60 home runs in a full season he's got five at the major league level which he didn't hit very well earlier when he got called up 58 at-bats five home runs though still I mean even if he hits 207 which is what he did hit at the major league level five home runs and 58 at-bats it's the guy's got just absolute power I think his biggest problem too is um playing time uh that's the problem with him and the fact that yeah so I went through Kevin Cron's game log and I'm like looking at his his home run get, patterns and I'm thinking I wanted to see how many home runs he's had in the last couple weeks and I counted since the season started I've counted six different multiple home run games that he's been in six including two of them Two of those six where he hit three home runs in a game. I mean, he's this guy is definitely there, but third base, he's got... Okay, let's see what he played. We, he's a first baseman for sure, but I have third base on here too. He must have played... He's played 14 times at third base. He's played 67 times at first base. In the major leagues, I, I, he's only played one game at third and nine games at first, so he was up for a total of 10 games. Um... Like I said, this guy hits for power. But at first base, you got Christian Walker, Wilmer Flores, Jake Lamb. And also at third base, you also have Jake Lamb, Eduardo Escobar, Wilmer Flores, the same cats. Um, I don't see a clear path to playing time, but I really do believe in this theory that if you hit good enough and you're hitting very well, then they're going to find a way to get you in the lineup. And they're going to get rid of the guy that's not hitting well. 
So keep your eye on him because, are you kidding me? 38 home runs in 299 at-bats. It's crazy. Gavin Lux, Mr. Shortstop, L.A. Dodgers. I mean, if you look at this guy's stats, you say, what's a good excuse why this man is not being called up to the majors? At AAA, he's hit 390. He's got three stole. At AAA alone, in 228 plate appearances, 195 at-bats. He's got 54 runs, 13 homers, three stolen bases, batting 390. This season, earlier in the season, he started out at double A. He also has 13 home runs at double A and 259 at bats. So on the season, he's got 26 homers and 10 stolen bases. And he's hitting like 350 batting average, 350. He's got close to 80 RBIs and almost 100 runs scored. But where is he going to play? Second base he plays. He plays. He has played 17 times at second base this year in the minors and 90 games at shortstop. So take a look at the depth chart in L.A. And you can see Max Muncy's day-to-day right now. He's the competition at second base. But you also have Chris Taylor who plays second and shortstop. Corey Seager, of course, is their starting shortstop. So we'll see. But Gavin Lux doesn't have a lot of clear path to playing time either. So... You know, it's better to leave these youngsters down in the minors if they're going to get everyday playing time. I don't know of anybody that brings up a minor league player just to sit on the bench. If the team doesn't feel like they are going to get enough playing time at the major league level, then they're not going to call them up, most likely. If they do call them up, you would think that they would find spots for them to play. So... There's some other things that are that's going on too down in the minors that where I noticed and I can't remember what teams it is right now but there's a couple minor league teams that are really close to their playoffs start very soon in the minors and there's teams that are right now are on the verge of making the playoffs not making the playoffs and if they are in the playoffs for sure or whatever they're going to want to keep their best players down there to try to win that trophy at the minor league level they don't really care about what's going on in the majors and I mean of course they want to keep guys like Gavin Lux. Of course they want to keep guys down there like Ryan Mountcastle. And if you, you know, if you're looking at one of these guys, you should look at what their minor league team is doing just to see where they stand as far as playoffs go. Because, believe me, they'll try to keep these guys down if they don't have room for them in the majors so far. And, I mean, they'll just wait till the minor league season ends if they really want to call a guy up. They don't have to be up on the 1st of September, but they do have to be up in order to make the playoffs with the team. So, anyway, let's talk about Cabrian Hayes, 22-year-old Pittsburgh third baseman. Right now, he's got a six-game hitting streak. He's got multiple hits in four of his last six games. But where is he going to play, right? Again, we got Colin Moran at third base, having a quietly good season. Um, Just in the last seven days, Colin Moran has two home runs and 10 RBIs. So, like, maybe somebody told this guy that his job is on the line. He's about to lose his job to somebody younger. On the season, he's batting two eighty seven with 13 home runs, 74 RBIs, and 42 runs. That's in 390 at-bats. Colin Moran can be moved around a little bit. He's played five games at first, 11 at second, and 102 at third base. But Kevin, I mean... Kevin Newman is is in this depth chart too that needs to be paid attention to because he I, he either plays second base or shortstop but he he is on the depth charts at a lot of different positions and he's pretty much taken over every everyday job um, at shortstop so he's going to be playing every day at shortstop and then you got Colin Moran at third so second base could um, could Brian Hayes I don't know it looks like he only plays third. I don't know where he's going to play. That's the problem with him. But Cole Tucker, another guy in Pittsburgh, 22-year-old, he's played six times at second base and 66 at shortstop. Now, second base is a little bit, seems a little bit more um, available to these youngsters. So, like, their second baseman now is Adam Frazier. Kevin Newman's the backup. Eric Gonzalez comes after him. But Kevin Newman, as I said, is playing shortstop. So... Eric Gonzalez has been horrible lately. He's had only seven at-bats in the last seven days. And Kevin Newman is really the guy that should be targeted here. I'm not kidding. If this guy is available, I don't know why he would be. But, I mean, literally, the other day he hit two home runs. He's really the one to target out of all these guys if he's available. I know that maybe he is because people don't like to to grab 
Pittsburgh offense or or Pittsburgh pitching, okay, for that matter. Um, Cole Tucker, he was called up on August 16th, and he stayed up for a little bit. He, what happened to him? He got, he's been up and down. He's been up and down, but he is definitely going to get called back up in September. They say they, they're going to give him a more prominent role. That's a quote out of the Athletic, so we'll see what happens there. But second base is where they got to put him. I want to talk about the Cardinals for a minute because the Cardinals are such an interesting team right now before I let you go. Um, the Cardinals, okay, in 2016, they were on the verge of making the playoffs, okay? Right down to the very final day of the season. And then in September, they went 11-14, and 14, and they just couldn't get it done. So they missed the playoffs for the first time since 2010, okay? That was 2016. In 2017, the Cardinals blew it down the stretch. They went 6-10 and 10 down the stretch, including seven losses in their last nine games. They lost seven of their last nine and didn't make the playoffs. Last year, the Cardinals lost five of their last six games, and they were outscored 38-18 to 18 by between the Brewers and the Cubs. 38-18. to 18. So they basically didn't score any runs in the last six games. They lost five of six. This season, the Cardinals are on fire. By the way, uh, Bauer's pitching against him today, which makes me grit my teeth. How am I going to how am I going to even justify throwing Bauer into my lineup when he's been so horrible and the cards have been so good? Well, okay. This season, the Cardinals, they get to face their rival Cubby seven out of the final ten games of the season, which is going to be intense and good, and I would love to be able to see this one of these games in St. Louis, Lenny. If we can make this happen, I would love to be able... We're actually going to be traveling through Kansas City and St. Louis at the beginning of September. I would love to go... To one of these St. Louis Cardinal games. I think it would be so much fun. I really am rooting for them. I like them a lot. Um, but here's what's going on with their. With their. With their uh, AAA. And their, their situation here. Tyler O'Neill, He plays left field, center field, and right field. He's hit in five of six rehab games down at AAA. But you've got this Edmund. Edmund. Tommy Edmund. Who's hitting really good. And I don't know where else Tyler O'Neill Would play other than. I think uh, left field. Let me see. No, not left field. Ozuna plays in left field. Harrison Bader plays in center field. And Dexter Fowler plays in right field. Right? Dexter Fowler also can play center field. This guy, Tyler O'Neill, has no place to play. Because this Tommy Edmond is hitting too. He's in, the, he's in the lineup every day. And so where? what kind of room are they going to have for... Just one second. I got to get their lineups. I'm going to get their batting order pulled up. All right. Dexter Fowler. Okay, he's the guy. He is the guy. He's the leadoff hitter every day. Dexter Fowler. Tommy Edmond bat, bats second usually. Against left-handed pitchers, it looks like they have him batting second and then at the bottom of the lineup against righties. But I see him here pitching or hitting against Adrian Hauser, who's a righty. He batted second. He batted seventh against Jordan Lyles the other day. He batted second against Senzatella. So these are right-handed pitchers here. And he's just hitting, so he's getting in the lineup every day. Harrison Bader, he's got a great defensive glove, so it's hard to believe that they would take him out when they would... Why would they mess around with something that isn't broken? And then they have Jose Martinez, who this guy is going to be added to the big league roster as soon as he's ready to return from the injured list. He has to hit well, though. He has to hit well. He needs to make up for the fact that he cannot play defense and he cannot run the bases. So if this guy's not hitting good enough to to um, to average that part of it out, then he doesn't even need to be. He's not going to be in the lineup. He has to hit well, or he's not going to be in the lineup. They've been playing him in the, in the outfield. So right field, if I'm to be correct here. But I don't see him getting a lot of... I would be very careful with him, even though I'd love to... Playing him this season, I like playing him because for DFS, he's a good... Sometimes he's very good grab in DFS because you only have to play him when he's actually playing, and he does hit well. He usually does hit well. 
Um, they have a couple outfielders who they might call up, but like I said, I don't see them bringing up guys to replace Harrison Bader, to replace Dexter Fowler, to replace the veteran Dexter Fowler when he's hitting so good at the top of that lineup. I mean, he's just absolutely reliable here in this case. Harrison Bader, great defense, so um, there's just no purpose in replacing these guys. However, here's a couple that could get called up. Outfielders, Adolis. Garcia, he's hit 30 home runs at Memphis. Justin Wilson, D Justin Williams, Williams, outfielder. He's a left-handed hitter. He's slugging 643 with a 1.113 OPS in 31 games for Memphis. So he must have just been promoted to Triple A. Um, 30 home runs. Are you kidding me? How could he hit 30 home runs in 31 games? Is that true? How could they not call this guy up if he's doing that? Because there's nobody. That, <laughs> okay. I would have to double check on that one. But it does say 30 home runs at Memphis. Oh, no. This is Justin Williams. So, Adolis Garcia. He's hit 30 home runs at AAA Memphis. Justin Williams has hit 31. Oh, no. He's played 31 games for AAA. He's not going to get called up. I just don't see it. He's too young. Infield candidates are Edmundo Sosa. And Ramon Urias, they're both on the 40-man roster. So that's really the only reason why I say they could get called up. But as far as the Cardinals go, I'm saying go Cards. you got to get out of this rut that you're in heading into the postseason. You need to beat your rival Cubbies in a few of these games. And that's it. A lot of these September call-ups are going to be based upon where the team stands. Again, and the minor league teams too. So... This is uh, exciting, and I'm going to go ahead and cut it off at the 30-minute mark, unless you guys have more you want to talk about. Oh, good. Can you post a list of all the players? I'm actually going to put an article out. It has all the players that I talked about today, and I will absolutely share it with you and be on with it. Kevin is CJ's little brother. Right, and so Phil Chappie says that the only person that I mentioned about that is competing with Kron for playing time, the only player that I mentioned that's better than Kron is um, Escobar, Eduardo Escobar. I agree, Kron is definitely on the verge of getting called up, and he does play third base, and he plays first base. So, seriously, Eduardo Escobar isn't even on, listed as their starting third baseman in Arizona. Let me check it out. Let's look at the depth charts. He's not listed at, according to Rotowire, he's not listed as their he's their second baseman. This is why he's their Eduardo Escobar doesn't even factor into Kevin Cron, so then none of the players that I mentioned are better than Kevin Cron. Although Wilmer Flores is hitting quite well right now and he plays all over the place. It's just Jake Lamb is in his way at third base. Christian Walker is in his way at first base. He's obviously more likely to play first base. Christian Walker is not hitting as good as he was to start the season. So, Kevin Cron, bring it on, Kevin. Bring it on. I like it. CJ's hitting again, too. Yeah, he's huge, this guy, Kevin Cron. He's huge. He's the little brother of CJ, but he's much bigger. So, um, that's that. I'll put out the article, and I'll even help you out a little bit more that guy thanks for coming you guys enjoy your weekend we will see you on sunday we're doing nothing but fan oh no that guy fantasy baseball on sunday afternoon at three o'clock and dougie will be on tomorrow at 10 a.m and that's all i know of for now let me check it out though just to make sure yeah we don't have anything on today money one is twice as nice it's taking a little bit of a breather we're getting him some new podcasting stuff and He'll be ready to go again next week sometime. Have a great day, everybody.